sometimes you just have to make the executive decision, like, let's just go down and wait. You, sometimes you just have to lower the weight. It just is what it is. You know what I mean? We're not here to ego lift. We're here to get stronger. And if you've got to keep breaking it up like that, sometimes you just got to lower the fucking weight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes you do, it's just a matter of lowering the weight. Good morning, you guys. So, funny story. I never turned my mic on. So, today's video is going to be a voiceover. So, just ignore what I'm saying right there. But I just wanted to introduce the fact that I'm doing a voiceover for today's glute day. I'm super excited because you guys know my knee has been kind of like iffy these past few weeks and we did not hit bulgarians during that time however my knee is a hundred percent so we're going to start off today with some bulgarian split squats i already warmed up i did three sets on the leg extension machine and then i did jump roping for 90 seconds in between each set and i also did some body weight lunges so let's go ahead and get into these bulgarians I'm going to be starting with 50 pound dumbbells. Can you say heavy? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be striving for eight reps each leg. One of the most challenging parts of Bulgarians for me is just making sure that my legs are far enough so that I can really get deep into the squat. Everything feels really good. And yeah, let's, uh, let's suffer through these Bulgarians real quick. I don't know about you guys, but it's like whenever I move to the second leg on any set of Bulgarians, it's so hard. <laughs> and I find myself having to take just a few seconds to just get my wind back so I can knock out the other leg. And here I am again, just trying to make sure that my front leg is far enough from the whatever I'm resting my foot on. I don't even know what that's called. So again, I'm gonna do eight reps try to go as uninterrupted as possible but i am so winded here it's not even it's not even funny Okay, so at this point, <laughs> I am struggling, you guys. These are super heavy. I took about four minutes, I believe, in from the first set into this set. It might have been three, but it, it was definitely longer than two minutes. Again, I, one thing I want to say is your rest time just depends on how fast, you know, the muscle group you're working can recover. If you are trying to do something and your glutes are just still super sore, then that means you need to take some more time to recover. And here I am just trying to thug it through, but I had to stop halfway because uh, these were getting really, really heavy. Okay, so I'm just trying to get myself together <laughs> and make sure that my placement is right before I grab onto these dumbbells again. One thing that I noticed with this particular set was, of course we wanted to be heavy, but they were feeling like really heavy. And I, I kind of found myself buying some time, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like just trying to get myself together for the next leg. And as you guys can see, I had to take a break. So what I did was I went down in weight 
just because I started to feel like it wasn't effective. You know, I started to feel it in my lower back. I was like, this is just too heavy. So I went down to 40s. And as you guys can see, I was able to get more reps in without having to stop, which is essentially what we want. So never feel like you shouldn't go down. So like I said, I started with 50s the first set and then went down to 40s. And here I am on set three using the 40s again. The 50s were just too heavy, you know, because it's one thing to stop here and there. But again, I just felt like I was doing way too much stopping. And it just, when my lower back started taking over, I was like, okay, these are just too heavy. So just trying to finish up these reps here. And then I did take a little few seconds to catch my breath before I started on my second leg. So yeah. And one thing I meant to tell you guys is my heart rate got to 178 doing these sets. So Bulgarians, baby. <laughs> They are no joke, and I am already dead at this point. So here we are. We're going to do sumo squats, you guys. I have a 110-pound dumbbell going for 10 to 12 reps here. We did sumo squats the other day on leg day, but I just really love sumos. I can feel them in my glutes and my quads. I just think they're great. It they're they're one of my favorite movements especially when you go heavy like how we're doing it with the 110 it's just it's crazy the burn is crazy as you guys can see like i couldn't help but grab my butt so we're gonna superset that with body weight jump squats and i wanted to get a stool to make sure that i'm getting low into my squat because sometimes i find myself i feel like i'm going low but i'm really not so every time my butt touches the platform, I know I'm getting low enough so I can jump back up. And yeah, quads on fire. <laughs> so, Jesus. And in between these sets, I was resting roughly about two and a half to three minutes. Um, and here we are with set two. Going to get into sumo squats again. I kind of felt like I could have did more reps on the first set. The first set we did 10. So this set here, I wanted to just push myself and try to get 12 because we've been on 110 for a couple of weeks now. And I'm like, okay, if we're not going to go up in weight, we can at least try our best to get more reps in. And so that's what I'm doing here. Just trying to always progress. <laughs> I feel like my face speaks for itself. Like, I'm dead. And then here we are doing some more body weight squats. Great cardio here. And no weight. Sometimes you guys see I'll, I'll use weight when doing jump squats. But today I just decided, you know what, let's focus on depth. And just making sure we're getting deep into the squat. And I did another set of 15 here. Okay, so this is the final set of sumos. And one thing that I noticed is sometimes when I'm super tired, I'll try to rest in between the set, but that actually makes it worse. So when I do sumos, I just do my best to just go all out. Like don't stop, <laughs> do not stop. There I was ready to do set or rep one, but my butt did not touch the platform. So I'm like, okay, that 
rep does not count. So again, just trying to make sure my butt touches the stool each rep so I know that I got low enough in the squat. Okay, you guys, so here we're doing something new. Yes, you guys have seen me do cable kickbacks. Great for the glutes, but I wanted to spice things up today and, and do some hip abductors with the cables. So right there, I'm just adjusting my music. So we're going to start with 10 kickbacks like we always do. And then before I switch the cable to the next leg, we're going to do some abductors. Okay, so if cable kickbacks are not in your glute routine, you don't know what you're missing. So I lowered the weight by 10 pounds for the hip abductors and the burn I feel in the leg that's not moving, like on the side of my glute. It is by far <laughs> the most intense burn of the day probably even worse than bulgarians and bulgarians if you guys do bulgarians y'all know how hard bulgarians are but doing the kicks to the side like this oh my gosh like i couldn't even get through one set without taking a break because the burn is it's like that so go ahead and add this to your next glute day don't don't be a little wuss like no add this and let me know how badly it burns. <laughs> Okay, so here I'm just adjusting myself because we're going to do everything y'all just saw on the other leg. And again, I moved the weight back up for the kickback part. So I think the weight is at 30. And then when I did the kicks to the side, I moved it down to 20 pounds just because, uh, yeah, it was, it was like that. Very, very humbling. You don't need much weight, even for the kickbacks. It doesn't have to be a 50 pound movement or whatever. You're gonna feel the burn at a light weight. And <laughs> I'm just literally standing there trying to figure out like, why do I choose to do this to myself every single day? Like glute day, leg day too, you guys, but glute day, like glute day is, is, is rough. Glute day is rough. So here we are again doing the side kicks. Um, and so I'm kicking with my right leg. And as you guys can see, it's actually the left leg, the left glute that I feel the burn in. So just trying to get through the set, but unfortunately I'm not able to get through it without taking breaks because the burn is just really that bad. Okay, so here we are again. This is set two, starting with the kickbacks. And one thing I wanted to tell you guys, in order to get your leg to swing like that, you have to be standing on something off the floor. So I just grab a 25 pound plate to stand on while I have the opposite leg do the swinging. So yeah, you guys can't really see the plate, but I'm standing on a 25 pound plate for the kickback and the side. And you might be able to see, I'm trying to kick the plate over to the, get it, yeah. All right, so there we go. We're doing the side kick again. The burn is excruciating, but we're going to get through it because who doesn't want sexy buns for summer, right? <laughs> and again, I can't do 10 without taking a little bit of a break in between the reps because, uh, yeah, it's it's this is this is intense you guys. This this was intense as you know what.
Okay, so here we are on set three. Uh, listen, one thing about me is I'm going to always be honest. I was low-key debating on whether or not to do a set three or to just call it quits for the day. But because I am trying to be very, very, very disciplined and all of the things, I was like, it's just one more set. We can get through this. We can get through this. So sometimes it is all about mind over matter. You guys always try your best to get three to four sets in. Two sets is cool, I guess, but when I'm doing any type of training on any muscle, I'm always striving for three to four sets. So, you know, to each his own, listen to your body, of course, but I always try to get at least three sets in anything that I do. Okay, so I'm just adjusting the cable to the next leg. And I'm at this point, you guys, I am literally saying to myself, this is the last leg. We're at the home stretch jazz. Like sometimes you just have to talk yourself through it. Like it just is what it is. You just have to give yourself that pep talk. So again, I moved the weight back up to 30 pounds for the kickback part. Just trying to lock in and stay focused. we're done <laughs> we're done and we're done that's it <laughs> deuces all right you guys so that concludes glute day let me find my phone i should have had it out let's see because i want to tell you guys um yo i got so much shit in this bag okay here we go i want to tell you guys how many calories i burned today so after i turned the camera off so after we did the cable kickbacks and whatever the whatever that was that we were doing <laughs> i'm gonna google that i seen it on instagram but i never looked to see like what it was called sometimes like influencers they don't put the t the name of stuff they just do it and i'm like oh that looks effective and then i don't know what it's called um so after we did that i did 12 minutes on the elliptical i had the resistance at 18 it goes to 22, I believe. So the resistance was relatively high. And that's the resistance I was using when I was doing the elliptical every day before my workout. So, you know, definitely got in some good work. It wasn't challenging or anything, like being on the elliptical afterwards. Like, it felt fine. But I kept my pace very, like, moderate. Like, my heart rate didn't get past 140. So, you know, it was, it was relatively light. So, okay. For the lift, so this includes the warm-up, but I don't turn the camera on for the warm-up. I just turn it on like when we're ready to get going. So for the entire lift, including the warm-up, I burned 1,050 calories. And then on the elliptical, I burned 152 calories. So all together today so far, I've burned 1,300 calories. I also have my watch on when I took my dog out earlier and we walked for 20 minutes. So it includes all of that. So not bad. I'm going to do 
uh, afternoon slash evening walk for an hour. If it's not raining, I'll go outside and walk. If not, I'll go downstairs. There's a gym downstairs in my apartment complex and get on the treadmill. I did that yesterday. It was raining, so I went on the treadmill for an hour and just walked. Like I think the pace was like 27 minutes per mile so it was so light it wasn't tiring like if I wanted to I could text while walking definitely could have carried on a full-blown conversation like it was just to get moving and I walked let me see if I recorded that I walked two miles on the treadmill so it was definitely light and altogether yesterday I burned like 1800 calories between the lift between running on the treadmill yesterday while I was at this gym and then walking on the treadmill. So I burned everything that I ate yesterday. And that's the goal again today. And that's the goal moving forward. Uh, Because I told you guys yesterday, this week, I started intermittent fasting for a 16-hour window of no food. And yesterday was the first day that I did that. And (laughs) shall It's definitely mind over matter. Because I've been fasting, but it was more like 12 and 12. So, you know, I had got used to that. And then I kind of was doing like 10 and 14. So, you know, that was fine. But yesterday was my first like 16 and 8. So only eating for... Only eating between 8 hours and then not eating for 16 hours. So yesterday I ate between... 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., which worked because I told you guys, I have to eat before I come to the gym. Like, I cannot work out on an empty stomach. Like, I'm not motivated. I don't feel like it. I'm not productive. I'm just constantly thinking about how hungry I am. So I've tried that before, lifting on an empty stomach, and I just don't feel like I'm getting a good lift in. So I don't do that. So, you know, eating before the gym is a must for me. Maybe not for you. Like, some people can do it. I just can't. It's not, well, it's not that I can't, I can do anything that I want. It's just, I don't feel like it's as productive. Like, I don't feel like I'm giving it my all because I'm just constantly focused on how hungry I am. And, you know, I would rather be satisfied before a lift and have my entire mind focused and dedicated on that lift than to be lifting just because I'm on an empty stomach and they say that's what's going to burn the most fat. Like, it just, you know what I mean? Like, you kind of have to think about it. Like, would your, are you looking for productivity in your lift? Are you looking to just do something because they say that's what you should do? You know what I mean? Like, I'm all about what's going to be the most effective way to work out. And for me, I definitely have a high quality, quality not quantity we're all about quality I have a high quality lift and workout when I'm satisfied and not hungry okay so that's why I choose to eat before a workout and plus I love breakfast some people when they intermittent fast they skip breakfast and just wait till like noon to eat their first meal but I've always been like a breakfast lover like I just love breakfast I love yogurt before I was vegan I loved eggs and just breakfast foods like I've just always been a breakfast person like I can't skip breakfast like you know to each his own but you can do your window however you want like I said some people don't like breakfast some people don't feel like they need it some people can lift on an empty stomach and you know have a productive effective lift and you know great for you if that's you But for me, nah. So I would rather just stop eating at four and just start my fasting at four. So, you know, to each his own. But as long as you, you know, just don't eat for 16 hours or whatever your window is. Like, there's so many different ways to do it. And so that's the time frame that I do. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So after four, no food. And it it was a little challenging, like, right before bed. Like, because I did my evening walk on the treadmill about, I want to say like 6, and so I walked from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., and so once I got off the treadmill, I wasn't tired by any means, like, physically exhausted or anything. Like like I said, it was a very easy walk, but I noticed that when I got off the treadmill, so from like 7 to right before 9 p.m. when I went to bed, I was struggling with cravings. Like, it was just, like, weird. Like, I wasn't necessarily hungry. Because sometimes I have to ask myself, 
am I hungry or am I craving? Because sometimes you're just craving food. You're not really hungry. You know what I mean? So I had to ask myself, like, am I really hungry here or am I craving? And my cravings were definitely high, but I think it's just because I was moving. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, that was day one, but I did it. Like I didn't cave. I didn't, you know, bend to my temptations. I thugged it out. So super excited about that. I didn't have any like lightheadedness or anything. You know, everything felt fine. Like it was just, it was just, it's just, it's just mind over matter with a lot of things. So, you know, this will be day two of 16 or eight and 16, whatever. And I'll let you guys know tomorrow how it goes. I do have my overnight oats here. Definitely going to need them because I am starving. So glutes was great. I'm happy that my body allowed me to do the split squats because we haven't done them in so freaking long because it's not even so it's it was my left leg that was irritating me and it was hard to bend it like past 90 degrees like well for for a couple of weeks I couldn't even bend it 90 degrees so you know that but it it wouldn't hurt like putting weight on it so basically, the struggle would have been if I had did the split squats while it was still irritated. Putting weight on the leg wasn't the issue. It would have been if I had my right leg in front of me and my left leg on the stool or the bench, whatever, having to bend it while doing the split squat. That would have been the issue. That would have caused the pain. So that's why we didn't do them. Lunges didn't really irritate it because you don't bend your knee more than 90 degrees to do a lunge but like squatting so like sumo not well no sumo squats not really but goblet squats I don't really do back squats but if I did those that probably would have irritated it because now you're trying to bend past 90 degrees um the reverse hack squat would have irritated it. So any type of movement that required me bending it more than 90 degrees would have irritated it. So that's why we didn't do Bulgarians for so long. But I was so excited to be able to do them. And to even do the 50s, even though I could only do it for like one set with two 50s. Normally when I do dumbbell Bulgarians, I only use one dumbbell. But today was like the first day in a very, 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 very long time that I used two. So I was proud of myself to do the 50s. Even though it was only for one set, it was short-lived. Just the fact that I was able to do it after not doing Bulgarians for probably over a month. Like, I was super excited about that. But dropping down to the 40s was definitely necessary. And that's why I say, like, listen to your body. Like, I'm all about pushing yourself but if the weight is too heavy to wear, like as y'all saw on set two, like I was, but whatever leg I was able to do, I could do it. But switching legs, what I've noticed with split squats, it's because you're already tired after doing one leg. So then doing the other, it just tires you out completely. So I always notice no matter what leg I start with, when it's time to do the second leg, I'm like so winded. So it's not necessarily, oh, well, my right leg is stronger or my left leg is stronger. Like, whichever leg I start with doesn't matter. It's just going to that second leg. It's just where it just, I'm like done. It's a struggle to knock them out without stopping. So when it started to get broken up like that, where like I could only do like two at a time and I had to stop. I was like, okay, the weight is just too heavy. It's it's just too heavy. Like, let's just go down. Because it's all about quality over quantity. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you just have to make the executive decision. Like, let's just go down and wait so that we can finish this. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, very, I'm very certain that in like two weeks from now, you know, if we were to do it again, I'll be able to do the 50s the whole way through. This was the first time back with Bulgarians in a long time. So, you know, I was, I'm not like discouraged about it or anything like that. You Sometimes you just have to lower the weight. It just is what it is. You know what I mean? We're not here to ego lift. We're here to get stronger. And if you got to keep breaking it up like that, 
sometimes you just got to lower the fucking weight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes you do, it's just a matter of lowering the weight. And when I did that, I was able to knock them out properly. So, you know, lower the weight if need be. Yeah, you want to just lower the weight. Listen to your body. Listen to your fucking body, okay? And then, like, my lower back started having to overcompensate. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes when stuff is too heavy, you're no longer working the muscle group that you're trying to work. Now you got other muscles trying to come into place because it's trying to overcompensate for the fact that the weight is just too heavy. You know what I mean? And so when I started, I started to feel it in my lower back and I'm like, bro, this is not, this is not a deadlift. This is not a lower back <laughs> movement. This is glute. So the fact that my back started trying to assist, it's like, let's just lower the weight. It's just too heavy. We're, we're, we're too heavy here. Let's just lower the weight. Glad we did it. Once I lowered the weight, I could feel it in my glutes again, which is great because today is glute day, so <laughs> it's not back day. So, you know, that worked out perfectly. I'm happy that it wasn't too crowded, and I'm glad that I have my little space. Like, it was a challenge putting the weights back, especially that 110 dumbbell. That's annoying because you had to walk all the way across the gym to put it back. But, like, having that little area, like, to myself was a whole vibe. Nobody was in the way. I felt like the lighting was great for the camera. I don't know what they're going to put over there. They finished, like, I guess the construction part. I hope they put some mirrors back. I, I miss the mirrors. The fact that there's no mirrors is really annoying. <laughs> That part is really annoying. So I don't know what the plans are. I don't know if they're going to put more equipment in that space where I was at. I don't know what they're going to do. But I hope and pray they add some mirrors. They need some fucking mirrors. Because there used to be mirrors over there. And they took them. So, you know, that sucks. But anyway, so nothing really planned for the rest of the day for me. Uh, For dinner today... What I'm thinking about doing, I'm going to make me a big pot of lentils, red lentils, and I'll probably like cut up some onions and bell peppers and maybe throw some mushrooms in there. Not too sure. So I'll do like lentils and I'm going to have the lentils over some quinoa so I can get some more protein in there. Lentils are a great source of protein too, like phenomenal source. And I love lentils. Like they don't even need a whole bunch of stuff. I just want to get my veggies in. And I have a big bag of frozen broccoli. I might even cook that up. And I think that's what I'm going to do for my dinner tonight. So I already ate the yogurt. I'm going to eat the overnight oats when we're done recording. I'll eat the lentils, quinoa, and veggies. And then I'll close my day out with a protein shake. And that'll put me at 1,630 calories for the day. So that's still within my frame, my... Uh, I'm drawing a blank. That's still within my calorie deficit, so that works. I'll definitely hit my protein. I think I'll end up with 90 grams of protein today, so that's great. Uh, but yeah, y'all, I'm just chilling today. I might have to go to Whole Foods. I hate going to the grocery store on Sunday. Sunday is just not the day because everyone and their mama is trying to go to the grocery store today because it's the start of a new week, you know, yada, yada, yada. People are off, so I don't know. I gotta see, because I am out of blueberries. I go through a shit ton of blueberries, you guys. Like, the shit is crazy. I'm glad it's getting warm out. I'm hoping to hit up, like, a farmer's market. I might be able to get a better deal on blueberries. Last week, Whole Foods had blueberries on sale for $5.99 for the big container, the big square container, you guys. I went through five and a half of those big square containers in seven days. So when you multiply that... Five ninety nine, and this is this doesn't even include tax. Uh, let's see, like it's ridiculous. Five point nine nine times five point five. Yeah, I spent thirty three dollars on just blueberries for seven days. So it's getting a little cray cray. So um, yeah, farmers market should be a thing now because it's getting warm. It's about to be the summertime. I might be able to get a good deal and they probably will taste better. So I'm excited about that. But other than that, you guys, that's pretty much it today. If you guys want to see what we did yesterday for back and biceps, make sure y'all click right here and I will see you guys tomorrow bright and early for chest, shoulders, and triceps. Bye you guys.